Hey guys, welcome back to the news. Today is November 2nd, 2022. And the news is brought to you by Analog Spotlight, a group of photographic retailers and manufacturers who have joined together to support analog photographic media and help keep analog photography thriving worldwide. The brands are, because you've probably forgotten, it's been a month, Camera Dactyl, Cosma Photo, Chroma Cameras, Reveni Labs, Reality So Subtle, Intrepid Cameras, Pixar Later, Brooklyn Film Cameras, Ondo Cameras, Standard Cameras, 20th Century Cameras, Pictoria Graphica, Analog Wonderland, Cinestill, Large Format Camera Store, Carmethita Film Lab, RH Designs, RZ Mago, and Alvandi Cameras. So thanks to them, the news are live and open for everybody. So, link is below if you want to know more about them. Then, let's start with the big news this uh, week. We have not one or two, but three camera releases. It's pretty crazy. Film camera releases. First of all, the Leica M6 is back. I made a whole video about it, but I think the most important thing we have to understand is Leica has added a third film model to their lineup. The M6 exists, I mean the MP, the MA, and now the M6. This camera is being said by Leica themselves to be sourcing parts that were original to the M6. So they've remanufactured parts that will be cross compatible with the original M6, at least the, I've, even they say the TTL, we'll see. And uh, this now makes not only the M6 a super cool uh, um, camera, but also the current M6 is in the market, fixable, repairable, so on, so on. Um, like us has been buying and selling and uh, refurbished M6s, and this seems that it's going to continue being their business model, but also selling a new one, which considering that the M6 was brought out in 84, if I'm not mistaken, until 2002, we have a warranty that the camera should last around 20 to 40 years in normal use. Um, that's pretty big news, to be honest. Uh, the rumor's over. It's not limited. It's a new whole lineup. The M6 will be continuously being made as long as demand is there. Then they also reissued the Leica 35 Sumilux. I think this is the 35 Sumilux first version, the one with the steel ring that's like $30,000 as collectible. This is obviously not a perfect lens. It's basically a re-edition of a classic. So don't expect aspherical, double aspherical element, sharpness, you know, all this stuff. This is supposed to be what they are considering the real king of bokeh, which we all call the King of Bokeh a Sumicron, I think third or fourth version. Um, I always get mistaken with those. But this is what they call the real, real King of Bokeh. So available, obviously. The Leica M6, by the way, is priced around $5,000. Do remember that $5,000 is a lot of money, but we're talking Leica that makes digital cameras that are 9000 So I think a film camera made from scratch with new parts and brass and all this stuff by hand for 5000 from a boutique manufacturer like Leica is reasonably priced considering that they last forever and ever. I'm not saying your FM is gonna break anytime soon, but you know what I mean. Then we have the Sumilux is like 3,800, which actually is also reasonably priced in Leica terms, uh, considering their other lenses are a bit more than that. Then we have news uh, or not news from Orpho Wolfen um, 500 made a video about this yesterday or the day before. Uh, basically, this film is still not being shipped to people as far as I've been told from anybody, uh, but it was available at Photopia Hamburg. I bought two rolls. I will be giving away one. Check the video I did on Monday. But that is the news. Then also they had the NP100 at the fair. I didn't buy black and white because I'm not a black and white guy for testing um then we have mbc the uh tv station or news broadcast in the u.s has made a piece about the resurgence of film photography you know it's a thing and it seems that they not only have they done it but they have, they have done it all shot on film which is super cool if you ask me uh um Grading days was there so you know that was cool to see but it is uh something that's on youtube you can watch it and it's pretty cool Let's go for the second camera of the news edition. We have the Lomo Apparat camera. 
This is a 35 millimeter camera with a 21 millimeter lens with a fixed focus and fixed shutter speed. It has two shutter speeds. One is one one hundredth, one is bulb and a bunch of accessories, lomography style. So you got like a split slicer, you have like a flash thingy, you know, all these kind of double exposures, I guess, and stuff like that. So you can do all kinds of creative stuff with this Lomo Apparat uh, camera, but it's a 21 millimeter lens, obviously not like a quality, but pretty cool, pretty fun. If you're into fun in photography, that could be your thing. Then we have news from Adox. Adox was at Photopia in Hamburg and I did a whole conversation with them, which I recorded. I have to check if the audio was any good because we couldn't really do proper labs because we had mics also. So it was weird. But basically the whole thing that they were mentioning is now here in the news. First of all, they're working on the 120 spooling. The 120 slitter is now working, which means they can do master rolls. And I'm making this size because their master roll is like 600 millimeters from the Marley factory of Old Ilford and now Adox, and they can slice it into, split it into or convert it, I don't know, cut into pancakes for 35 or 120. The problem is the part of putting 120 film into backing paper with the tape into a spool all in the dark at once. Uh, I talked to the actual engineer that is doing this. It's an ongoing project. They hope to be ready soon and soon can be six months, eight months, 12 months. In film photography terms, that is pretty soon. I have film I haven't developed a year ago, so that's pretty early. And also coming from then, it seems that Adox is uh, changing or making a new ad um, addition to the Scala family with a 400-ish black and white film. I think it was 320, they were testing it there at Photopia. They've hinted a few things on social media, but yes, Adox Scala, high speed black and white. I guess it is high speed. That's what we call high speed nowadays. Uh, 400 speed is coming soon. So that's pretty cool. 35 millimeter film. And uh, that is the news for Adox. Then we have one instant with a replenish of stock. So if you are into one instant and you want to stock up, they have now it, have it back in the store. Also has discounts on bulk orders. So if you're buying more, you get to pay less. Then we have Voigtlander with the new 35 millimeter Nocton F 1.5 classic, so or vintage line. <clears throat> this is kind of a pretty cool little petite lens from Voigtlander, and it's announced in black and uh, silver. The black now is not anonized or black. I, I don't know. It's black and silver. You can check them out. Uh, Voigtlander makes pretty cool lenses. Also, big news, uh, Cinestill 400D is now available. And you might wonder, hey, this has been available for a while. Well, yes, but it was only through their Kickstarter pre-order campaign. It wasn't a Kickstarter, it was a pre-order campaign. Now it is available at local stores, you know, from them, and et cetera, in 35 and 120 film. I read the whole press release. There's no mention of 220. They are talking about 4x5, which obviously they still have to deliver to the people that backed it, but also keep it as a con constant product. They were saying they're aiming for, I think it was January, but I might be mistaken there. Then we have the NONS SL645 camera. Like I said, three cameras this week. This is a Instax mini camera that accepts uh, interchangeable lenses. So it does like Canon EF and a bunch of uh, Pentax K and other stuff that shoots Instax. Uh, Nons has already made other cameras and this is their third, if I'm not mistaken, which is pretty cool. It's now on Kickstarter. You can back it. It's already fully funded, but you can also jump on the boat if you want to pre-order ish it. Then we have news from Kodak Alaris, and this comes from a website that I think is Australian or something like that, saying that Kodak Alaris has now been pardoned or postponed. I don't know. There was an official name for it. Um, money for that they have to pay the pension fund. If you don't know about Kodak's Alaris history, basically when Kodak, the big Kodak, the one Kodak we had, when bankrupt, they had a huge uh, debt with the pension fund in the UK. And their way to come to an agreement with them was like, here, we give you Kodak Alaris or we create Kodak Alaris. You sell uh, and distribute uh, still photography. So still rolls, like rolls like these, not those, but you know what I mean. Uh, what we use on our normal cameras, uh, photo cameras. 
and you keep the proceeds or whatever. So Kodak, what I call Rochester, produces all the film, but then it immediately goes to Kodak Laris. But with all the problems, I guess, they've been having with film not being in the shelves and all this, uh, Alaris is in some money trouble. I guess they had some debt to pay and they've pardoned or postponed the payment for future time. So this is kind of a problem. My vision, not, not a very I'm not being objective here in the news, is that Kodak Alaris will probably be end up going bankrupt themselves and Kodak Rochester reabsorbing Kodak Alaris. We don't know what will happen. Uh, and then everything will be Kodak in one place. I dream of a Kodak film company only. No printers, no inkjet, no anything else. Just film, motion picture, and still photography, Kodak. Um, but that might be you know, a lot of uh, dreaming. Let's get back to the news. Then we have Dektronics with the printalizer available now. Uh, if you are wondering what that is, it's basically a how do I say this, densitometer that does reflective and the one that goes through, I can't say that word, not right now, uh, it's quite small. The price is now $249 for the first batch and then it will continue at $299 US dollars. You can actually, like I said, order them now. It's a densitometer, nobody I think is making new densitometers. So Derek, he's actually a Patreon and a friend, is making his own, which this is uh, Dektronics Printalizer. So you can go check it out. He's been going through a bunch of steps. There's videos on YouTube and so on, so you can understand what the product does, uh, but it's available right now. Talking about other available things, uh, we have Film Never Die with their CP800. Their color, well, sorry, their film processor is live. Remember they had an Indiegogo or something campaign, didn't go through, well, they decided to heck Let's just make it. So they've made it and it's available to pre-order or order from them for 4,300. I think it's Australian dollars. I might be wrong on the currency. Or it's also open source. So if you are someone that likes to finick with things and get electrocuted with water and chemicals and programming, this is for you. Uh, it is available for free, obviously open source. That's what it means. And you can make your own. You could also order it to do it yourself not sure what that means. I guess you buy all the components from them and then make it. Um, but it's super cool, to be honest. We are now having multiple processors being made now. We have uh, the Aura in um, Nordiva, yes. Uh, then we have this one, and then we have the Midtones machine. So three processing machines being made now, uh, apart from Filmomat and other ones that already existed. So then we have seven artisans with their 35 millimeter F2 WEN lens for Leica M. This is a new lens made by them. Uh, it's coming out in November 7th or something like that. So I guess it's a redo of their lens improving stuff. Uh, so if you're into that stuff, um, you can go ahead and check it out. But it does look nice and they probably have improved stuff, which is good. Then we have Jobo with new color chemicals. Jobo, as you know, is the processor and darkroom materials uh, producer based in Germany. They are now getting their hands wet. And that means they are going to be pr uh, producing and selling E6 uh, chemicals, C41 chemicals, and ECN2 chemicals. These are being made by a partner in Japan and be distributed through Jobo's network, which is worldwide. That's pretty good news for those who like developing their own film with Jobo's or without Jobo's. You can do it with any of uh, that stuff. Then we have a new Chroma Camera website. This is a call out for Chroma Cameras, which is a sponsor of the news like you heard before. Please fix your Twitter uh, website. I went through there and I couldn't find the website, so I had to go through Instagram and then found the website. You have their new 24 millimeter F11 lens. You have skins for like the Lomo graph lock. Uh, you have cameras and a bunch more stuff. So yeah, new website, new place to buy uh, over there. Then there's an interesting news of the week, the Kodak Super 8. And yes, you might be thinking that, well, camera. You be like, that camera is being discontinued. It was just like came and it was a fluff and just disappeared. Well, it seems that there's a job, job opening uh, in, I think it was Toronto, Canada, that was asking for someone to take care of a bunch of stuff. I'll put a screenshot. But this is come because of their oncoming or coming 
Kodak Super 8 camera. So it seems it's coming. I have heard many, many, many behind the scene rumors that it was actually not a dead project, that it was coming. It just was taking extra, extra time. Something to do with like the gears and the sink and I, don't ask me exactly what, but yeah, I've heard rumors. It seems that it might be coming for real, and that is good news. And a good segment for Super 8, we now have Filmomat with a 8 and, well, Super 8, 8, uh, and 16 millimeter processor. So Filmomat was at Photopia when I was there. He's made basically the Lomo developing machine for Super 8 and 16, but a new iteration. It is pretty big, okay? I told him he actually has to start putting a banana for scale. That's the thing. Um, because it's the size of a pretty big saucepan. And it has a really nice reel he's made with, I don't know what technology, and he can load a whole 100 feet of 16 or 8, or Super 8 uh, mil film, and develop it. It takes like 1.5 or 2 liters or 3, I don't know. It takes quite a bit of chemistry, but I'm telling you, it's big. And that you rotate it one way, you develop, you change the chemicals, so on. This is coming from the Filmomat. It is independent to the Filmomat machine, the usual developing machine. This is a completely different developing machine, which is actually manual. There's no developing automatic things. It's just completely manual. But for those who are shooting a motion picture in 8 and 16 mil, you know that the Lomo version of this tank is quite expensive and brittle because it's, I think it's made with Bakelite and so on. So this is a new option. It's priced at $9.99, which is honestly pretty cheap if you're doing your own processing for color motion picture. You know that it's expensive. And it is new, which is pretty good. And that's pre-order price. There will be a little higher, I think 1.2 grand uh, when he finishes uh, the pre-orders. But yeah, that is the news for today. As always, please send me any info you have to the email below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.